the live stream. We're glad to have you with us tonight. My name is Jerry Reeves. And uh, those of you that were here Sunday know we talked about David. And we talked about uh, why he wrote Psalm 51. And uh, tonight I want to talk to you about another prayer David wrote is in Psalms 139, if you want to turn, and I'm going to read from the King James only because I love to quote the King James Jesus. Um, I, I study out of the NASB and uh, some others, but, but I, I like the prose in the King James. It says, Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way ever after. Father, I thank you for bringing us together tonight to be with me. Help me, Lord, to get across the message that you want me to give tonight, and I praise you and thank you for being my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now, to, for Psalms 51 in this particular prayer, you really have to go back in David's life all the way back to those days he was in the field tending those sheep. He spent many, many hours talking to God. There wasn't anything else to do there to do, and so what he would do, he would spend hours and hours talking with God and God talking with him. And it developed into a very special relationship, a relationship that uh, you could just know by what God said that was very uncommon for anyone to have, especially a young boy. And it says that, David was a man after God's own heart. And so he had developed a relationship that, that he knew and felt God in everything that he did. Now, I don't know about you. Of course, the day I got saved, I, it, was, it was a day I'll never forget because the Spirit ended, entered me and changed me. And let me say, you can get only as close to God as you want to get. If you spend more time with God, he'll spend more time with you. And he'll draw you closer and closer to him. The more you think about God, the more God will begin to control your life. And you have to... Make a specific point. We're flesh. It doesn't want God controlling us. It takes a supernatural action from the Holy Spirit to draw closer to God. And so as you, as you try to draw closer to God, know that Satan's going to do everything in his power to bring you down. Now, David was a young lad in the field, and he had developed a very special relationship with God, enough to where God wanted to make him the king of Israel. He was the man God wanted to be king of, the, of Israel. And so uh, he, he was made king, and we talked about the sin in David's life. Well, as David let that sin enter in his life, and the battles that were fighting with the enemies from around him began to gather on him, and the pressures began to gather on him from being king. All of a sudden, he wasn't spending any time with God. He wasn't spending hours upon hours talking with God like he used to. And he began to realize that he was away from God. And he missed that feeling. I'm going to tell you, when God gets real and then 
you get out of his will and he's not real to you, you miss it because you feel it and you know it. And, and that's what David was feeling. And he had got to the point to where all the sin that had occurred in his life and all the pressures from being king and the enemies that he'd been fighting, the battles he'd been fighting, he had lost contact with God. And now he was ready to find out what was happening. Why? And so he said, God, search me. God, find out. Help me find out why I'm not close to you as I ought to be. Why I can't feel you like I used to feel you. Why we don't have the relationship we used to have. He said, search me. You know, you can lose something and you'll search and search and look hidden under everything and, and, and until you can find it. Well, God was telling, I mean, David was telling God, search my heart. Now, you don't want to tell God to search your heart unless you're serious about it. Because, see, where sometimes we might not find what we're searching for, God don't miss anything. He'll find everything. And so he, David told him, says, search my heart. Bring it to my thoughts so I'm aware of what's keeping me from feeling you and knowing you and loving you like I used to. And that happens to us. We first get saved, boy, we're on fire. We're going to do everything we can for Christ. But as we go through it, the daily toils and, and the little sins we let creep in our life, it begins to push us away from God. You see, to God, there is no level of sin. Sin is black. No big sin, no little sin, just sin. And every sin you have separates you from God. Takes you a little further away. And David had gotten to the point to where he did not feel God anymore. And he wanted that feeling back. He's getting toward the end of his life, and he's, he's, he's wanting to know that he's where he can talk to God and feel God like he used to. That's the way every one of us should feel. That's the way every one of us should live. He says, try me, Lord. Try me. Jeremiah 79 says, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? The only ones that can know it is you and God. And so David prayed, Search me, O God. And I've seen this verse completely change the church I was in in North Carolina. Completely change every one of my deacons in North Carolina. It broke every one of them. And, and what it did, I took them up on a mountain. Wasn't anybody there but just us. And I put one out here in the woods and one over here in the woods and one in this bedroom in the cabin and one in this bedroom in the cabin and one in the basement in the cabin and one over here against a fence post. And I told them, we're going to pray two hours, four times between now and Saturday morning. One of my deacons, he said, two hours? I, I've never prayed two hours. I said, well, you are this weekend. <laughs> and I give them a piece of paper, and on it, I, I told them, I said, I want you to pray that God will search your heart and anything that he brings to your mind. Now, know that if you tell God to search your heart and bring it to your mind, anything he brings to your mind, he has a problem with. And you got to get rid of it. 
See, Psalm 66, 18 says, If I regard iniquity in my heart, God will not hear me. And so, therefore, you got to get rid of all of it for God to deal with you and to talk with you. It can't separate you and God. And so, so what? let me tonight encourage you Sometime when you get a chance, get along with God. I'm not talking about two minutes, five minutes, ten minutes. It's good when you only got two or three or five minutes. But find you some time, quality time to spend with God. And I promise you, it'll change your life. You'll find yourself where you first just give it an hour, you'll want to give it two hours. You'll want to give it three hours. And then the day will come when you want to give him all of it because you don't want to be separated from that feeling, to, or that elation you get when God's present and around you, that confidence you have when God's around you. And David had lost that, and he wanted it back. Those deacons, they went out, and I give them this list to go through that I'm going to give you in a minute. And, and they went through it. And at the end of the first two hours, they came back. We met in the cabin, and not one of them could talk. All they could do was cry. And it changed our church completely because it put us away from church being somewhere we went on Sunday morning to somewhere we was going to go worship a living God. And when you develop that attitude, it changes your life. We don't come to church. But we can walk through those doors. There should be one thing on our mind, looking for Jesus. <laughs> and I can promise you, if you come looking for him, he'll show up. He'll show up. And if it's just a smaller group of people got to be serious about searching their heart and doing what they need to do to get right with God, it will change everything in the service. The whole mood would change. I said I wasn't going to talk about this, but if you want me to, God, I will. 2016. I got up on Sunday morning. We had been praying. And when I'm talking about praying, I'm talking about on Sunday morning we come before services and all the young preachers and deacons, they lay in the altar and cry out to God. I want God to show up. They had gotten serious about wanting to see and feel God. And so I just got up that Sunday morning, and I, and, and, and I pre preached like I always do, you know, just me. But when I give the invitation, the Holy Spirit took over. Not because I preached something, but because those men had prayed that the Holy Spirit would show up. And within a month and a half, we had 72 saved. And on Sunday morning, one Sunday morning, I baptized 43 people. And it had nothing to do with the soap preacher. It had everything to do with getting where God could do something in the church. And it, and it takes Specific action from each individual. I mean, I got through preaching. I gave the invitation. They were they were members, been members for eighty years. Come running down the aisle, take my hand, and say, "Preacher, I'm lost," and get in the altar and start praying, crying that they were lost. I'm I'm still standing there watching. I mean, there was over here, then over here, and and this was every Sunday morning for two months. And every Sunday night, the church, the, they, would, you could, they couldn't wait to get to church. 
because of the spirit in this room. I've had them get out of the car and come in and say, Preacher says, I felt the spirit when I got out of the car. Well, I told them, I said, well, that just means you came looking for this. You've got to want God to work in your life. And so if each of you would, would say, and find time to pray the prayer, ask him to search your heart on your faithfulness. How faithful are you in serving God? How faithful are you in the things that he asks you to do? How many times do he ask you to do something and you put it off? If he brings it to your mind, you've got to get rid of it. You've got to make it right. How devoted are you to God? Where does God come in your echelon of priorities? Is he number one or number two? Sad to say, too many people make him number two. They say, my family comes first. Well, I want to tell you, if you put God first, he'll take care of your family. He'll take care of your family. God, don't walk second place. Amen. He has to have first place in your life. And then, what about your prayer life? What's my prayer life? Remember what it said many years ago in John 16, 17? If you desire any entity in my name, Any iniquity. That little white lie you might have told your wife when you didn't want her to know you did something. To God, that's a sin. You lie. If God brings something to your mind in that respect, you got to get it right. You got to get it, get rid of it. Do you have any anger against someone? God brings them to your mind, you got to make it right. You hold grudges, you got to get it right. How truthful are you in your relationship to God? Is God really first in your life? How truthful are you when you answer? He's got to be first in your life. And when you get those things in order and you pray for him and you start seeking him like he expects you to seek him, he'll begin to work in your life like you never believed it would happen. All of a sudden, you realize you're talking to him all day, some people, I had one guy say, well, preacher, if I try to talk, do all that, I'd be pr praying all day. Gee, why did Paul say pray unceasing? Amen. He knew what he had to do to stay in touch with God. And we need to know what we have to do to stay in touch with God. And we need to take the steps as an individual. I can't do it for Chuck. I can't do it for Marty, and they can't do it for me. You got to do it for yourself. Amen. It's between you and God. Who knows your heart? You and God. And if he brings anything to your mind, he means for you to get rid of it and make it right. That's the way God works. That's the way David felt. That's the reason he prayed the prayer the way he did. He missed God calling on him. He missed God talking to him. He missed God walking with him. And when we get away from God, we should know it immediately in our life. When we know we aren't where we need to be with God, we need to take steps to make it right. 
putting it off won't get it done. Lying to ourselves won't get it done. Being truthful with what he brings to your mind is what will get it done. And I get rid of it. Help God fill you to the point. That when you're not in a relationship with him, you miss him. You miss him. And that's what happened to David. He missed not having a relationship with God. So let me encourage you. Sometime when you get a chance, open your Bible to Psalms 139. Verse 23 and 24. Sit down when you've got an hour or two hours. Pray that prayer to God. From your heart, sincerely. And ask yourself about your devotion to God. Your faithfulness to God. Your prayer life. Lord, do I have any anger? Do I have any grudges? How truthful am I, God? And if he brings it to your mind, get rid of it and make it right. And then you'll notice a change in your life. And if there's enough change in every one of our lives, it'll begin to change We'll experience something we never dreamed would take place because God is faithful. God is faithful. Search me, O oh God, if there be any wicked way within me. Cleanse me, bring it to your mind. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for everyone here tonight. Thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for bringing our pastor and his wife home safely. God, change our lives, mold us, make us what you'd have us to be. Search us, O oh God. In thy name we pray.